How are you doing? Good. Want to let you know we're recording if it's not obvious. All right. But uh, I was hoping to be able to speak with someone about the MRAP vehicle. What about it? Uh, just the need for it in a community like this. Well, we have a tactical team that uses that. Okay, do you think uh, a vehicle like that is, I mean, is conducive to a free society, something like that? You never know. You never know what you might need to help people in the community. Has it been used for anything where it's, it's been better had than, you know, not had? I, you know what, I couldn't even tell you because I'm not on the tactical team. Dude, what if... Uh, what if a vehicle like a tank were offered to the police outfit here? Would that be accepted as well? You never know what you might need. I mean, if you have a hostage situation, if you have somebody barricaded, you know, holding innocent people, you might need a vehicle that's fortified to protect the officers when they're trying to help somebody. So you don't you don't have personally have any qualms with knowing that there might there's soon to be 2,700 of those vehicles distributed around the states? Not as long as they're trying to help people. Interesting. What would be the stated purposes for those? Like, which situations would they use those in? Like I said, if you have somebody that's barricaded in with innocent people, you know, somebody holding people hostage, you never know. You never know what kind of, you know, armored vehicle you'd have to use for that. You don't think if uh, a people who work for a coercive monopoly that, you know, hold themselves accountable to the, you know, that investigate themselves, you know, if you provide such hardware to them that that might uh, create a situation that uh, isn't ideal? Well, I don't know. I, it, you're getting political on me, and all I'm, all I'm here is to help people. Help well, people, you know, people that are, you know, kidnapped, held hostage, you know, school shootings. You never know what kind of vehicle you might need. I don't know what the politics would be of it. I'm just here in the business of protecting and serving the public. Would you happen to know, and can you disclose the, the cost of the vehicle? That I don't know. Okay. How long have you had it? I, I don't know that either. You know, um, Monday, uh, there should be some administration here. And yes. They have all the paperwork, and they can tell you whatever you need to know. It's kind of a strange hour, yeah. Well, that's good. Mm -hmm. So, did you have any other questions? Um, well, yeah, I would just say, I, my town uh, in Keene, New Hampshire, they recently acquired a Bearcat, and there was a strong outcry from the community saying it's unnecessary, and that's pretty much just an armored vehicle. It can supposedly stop a 50 caliber. Um, but the thing that raises my interest about the MRAP is it seems to be a much more militarized vehicle than a Bearcat, which, you know, a Bearcat might actually be useful in an active shooter situation, but the MRAP just seems like it's, I don't know, anti-missile or something. It, it just seems like totally... Well, unnecessary in the United States. You know, in this day and age, I, I did talk about hostage situations and people and school shootings, you know, where people would be taken, taken hostage. But also you have to take into consideration that you never know if you would be coming to a terrorist attack. You know, if somebody were to try to occupy a mall or, or put down improvised explosive devices. In that situation, you might need a vehicle like that. You just don't know what to expect, and you just have to prepare to ensure the safety of the community. And if it takes having an armored vehicle like that just in case something like that happened, then I think it's a good thing. Well, I mean, if we're to take the safety justification was logically extreme, then perhaps like when babies are born, they should just put in be put in concrete cages and for the rest of their lives, and that way well, there's no harm to come to people. Freedom and liberty, but um, what I'm saying is that if have a terrorist attack, you, you might want to safeguard the public by having a vehicle like that. I mean, what, what might you, do you think it's reason, a reasonable person might see a vehicle like that and think that that actually creates more terror and fear if, than, than the, the, you know, fear tactics put forth of this, you know, amorphous terrorism and war on terrorism? I would encourage any civilian in this town, if they have any qualms about that vehicle, that they can always attend one of our public meetings and bring it up if they, you know, feel that it's, um, uh, what were the words that you used? You thought it was... It's security uh, theater. I mean, it's, it's, it, the war on terror is security theater. It's, it's, you know, trying to, trying to grow the police apparatus here under this guise of protection and, and said it's, it's, uh, you know, creating more, uh, division between the so-claimed protectors and the, you know, you use the word civilian and what's, you know, I, I take issue with that term because that implies that there's non-civilians that maybe have different sets of rights than civilians. Well, you're entitled to the opinion that it may be intimidating, but I think that 
you know, if we had a group of people that lived in town and they attended one of these public meetings and they knew we had this vehicle, I would, I would think that a large portion of the people would be glad that our department has been proactive in safeguarding the community against something like a terrorist attack. Um, so you're welcome to come to one of our public meetings with the town council and bring up your concerns that it's intimidating. When are those meetings? Uh, Tuesdays. It's the second Tuesday of every month, I believe. Okay. If a private industry uh, had a vehicle like that uh, without, you know, political state permission, would that be acceptable? Uh, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what the... I'd have to research the law in terms of a public entity or a private person owning, you know, a vehicle like that. Okay. The law is on that. Well, well, I get yeah. My earlier question about a course of monopoly, and you referred to it as political speech. I don't understand what's political. It, to me, it's factual because you know y'all's outfit, as well as in the regional SWAT team that you said has use of that. I mean, they're all paid for with stolen money, correct? I don't know where they get the funds. It could be grant money. I don't know. You'd have to talk to the administration about that. I don't know where the money comes from. Well, I mean, even if the grant money came through the federal outfits, I mean, it's still taken from somebody. But your colleagues that might drive that vehicle or be, you know, uh, transported in that vehicle, how are they paid? How are my colleagues paid? Mm -hmm. They're paid by the public. Right. Around the department. So is so, contributing to that system voluntary or compulsory? Well, it's tax money. You know, people pay their taxes, and the taxes provide the money for public safety. What is happened? it voluntary? Voluntary to pay your taxes? Yeah. You have to pay your taxes. So is it voluntary or compulsory? It's, you have to pay your taxes, well, you can use whatever, whatever language you want. But again, we're getting into political discussion, and I'm really just here to talk about public safety. And I don't have the answers about where the funds come from. I'm sorry about that. Okay. Right, I just asked you to think about, I mean, if public safety, at the end of the day, is the, is the goal, then if you say a certain group of people has a right to steal from others to then protect them, you know, I don't think you're going to get safety ever through an institution like that. Instead, it has, it's an institution... You know, that does the exact opposite. All I know is we're here to answer calls for people that say that they need help. If somebody's stealing from them, if they're being hurt, you know, we're, we're there to answer the phone and we're there to, you know, to go into any situation. Well, again, to go back to his question, if, if someone's getting stolen from, I mean, that could be called, that's what taxation is, correct? It's, it's not voluntary, correct? Well, when you live in the United States, you have to pay your taxes. But one of my concerns is that it may be used, and it would be great if there was a situation in which it really was needed and actually put to use. Um, I don't know if that'll actually be the case, but I foresee the use of such vehicles being used in drug raids or ha raids of people's houses. And uh, so I think there's a major issue with there being someone who's not actually victimizing someone, but it's their behavior is criminalized and this military hardware is being used on them. And you know, I see that as a, you know, something that's a potential threat to but not just the people it's being used on. You but are in a community and one of those raids occur and you think that it was not in the best interest of public safety, you always have the right to, like I said, attend a public meeting and air your grievances. Okay. All right, gentlemen. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming out to speak with us. Could we get Yeah, your thank you very please? much. What's that? What's your first name, please? Nick. Oh, thank you, Nick. All right. Take care. All right, take thank care. you. Have a great night. Peace. Okay, Nick, B-E-R-Z-A-K, entertained a few questions from us, so that's what it is, I guess, I don't know. Yeah. I don't think, uh, I hope many people wouldn't readily want that in their neighborhoods, but... Well, I was glad to hear first that his, his interest was in public safety and helping people, but unfortunately I don't see that type of vehicle as being one that's going to be used to help people. I see it as one that's going to be used to scare and intimidate people, maybe ram through the drawer of it at the door of a drug dealer or something like that. Um, if there's an actual hostage situation or something like that where it is useful, wonderful if it does get used in a, in a situation like that, but I really don't see, you know, in the United States, the yeah. IEDs, terrorism, I don't think that's something that's commonplace here in, here in Indiana, anywhere else in the United States. Yeah, and the stated ra some of the stated rationale for this vehicle were, you know, it could drive through like three feet of snow and things like that. Like, well, they don't have plows up here. I'm sure that's not true. You know, it's ridiculous. Well, well we don't got time to plow. We got a drug house to raid. I'm sure.
have to say. Right. I don't know. He was pleasant. He didn't, yeah. he didn't really start getting fostered, so that's good. Yeah, he was nice. Nice guy. He's caught up in an extortion racket, though, unfortunately. Yes, sir. All right, y'all. He seemed kind of floundering when I asked him. Well, you have to pay your taxes. 